para dressage rider Natasha Baker, a five-time Paralympic gold medalist, has never let anything stand in her way. When Natasha was first diagnosed with transverse myelitis, it was actually quite a long process. So we, we believed at first that she had a, a different kind of syndrome where they generally make a very quick recovery. Transverse myelitis was diagnosed, but um, that was quite a few months down the line. So we really, we were just kind of living day to day and just, just going with with everything, it was so much to take on board, it was just too much really to take on board all in one go. So I think it gradually sunk in as the time went, went by. I don't obviously remember contracting the virus um, and I feel so lucky that I was brought up with it and so I don't know what it's like to walk normally or, or do things in the conventional way and mum and dad always said that I can do anything I want and it may not be in the conventional way but it'll be in the Natasha that's, way. That's definitely my favourite. As a child, she did, um, well, she did swimming, she did brownies, she played the violin badly, um, she played the piano. Um, there was lots of different activities every evening. Um, and then it was Natasha's physio who said to me, you know, look, she's desperate to ride. You really need to, to, to get some serious riding in. And although Natasha had always been sitting on ponies before she, was, before she could even walk, she was sitting on ponies, the serious sort of riding didn't start until she was about nine um, when we took her to the local RDA and she got spotted and uh, at the age of 11 she was put onto the world-class program and again they molded her really into the person that she is today. It was definitely right place, right time, wasn't it? Was. it? We were so lucky yeah. that South Bucks RDA were not just into the therapy riding, they were into the sports mm. riding as well, and they had horses that were competition horses, didn't yeah. they? And, and that is, at the time, it was very unique to the RDA. And they had really close links with the Paralympians, didn't they? Yes, so they did, yeah. When the team from Sydney came home, mm. um, we were like the first stopping point for them and yep. so we were able to see the medals and meet them and, and they were such a big inspiration for us young up-and-coming riders that wanted to be Paralympians one day. Once I set my mind to something I, I have to give it everything to mm. be the best that I can be in that. Yeah. There's nothing really that gets in my way and there's, there's always obstacles and and that's the thing, and, and the thing that I've always said to anybody, if you want something enough, you won't let anything get in your way of getting there because if you give up, then you obviously don't want it enough. That's right. There's always a way around something if you want it. Yeah. Natasha's drive and determination are evident, not only in her equestrian career, but in everything she takes on in life. I love the feeling of being on top of the mountain. You kind of feel like you're on top of the world and being in the fresh air, it, there's just nothing like it. Back in 2013, I got an invite from my really good friend and owner at the time, Christian Landolt, and he invited us to, out to his chalet in Gestad um, for a bit of a trip. I was watching all of my friends and family off skiing, having a great time, uh, laughing a lot at them falling over. And uh, the ski instructor came up to me and was like, why are you not skiing? So I said, well, you know, I'm disabled. Um, plus I've got a bit of an injury. And he asked me where my injury was. Um, I said it was on my hip and he was like, oh, that's fine. Give me five minutes. And came back with this ski, the sit ski, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. And he took me up for a, for a free ride and I've been absolutely hooked ever since. There's a massive difference between um, sit skiing and normal able-bodied skiing. Obviously, able-bodied skiers are standing up. They've got two skis, one on each foot and the poles. Um, whereas mine, I am literally sitting on one ski in kind of like a bucket seat. And then I've got crutches that attach to my arm, which are called riggers. And they've got mini kind of skis at the bottom. So they're there to help me turn and help to stabilize me. Um, and then I have to use my body weight to kind of 
turn in to, to make the turns whilst I'm skiing. So it's, yeah, it's very much down to balance, which kind of goes well hand in hand with my riding. So Mark, my other half, um, is a really competent skier and um, he's skied pretty much all of his life. Mark's been massively instrumental in my skiing journey and, uh, and for my 30th birthday, Mark, my parents, Christian and a friend of ours all got together and they actually bought me my own sit ski. And so that's a, a massive turnaround for me. It has made me much more independent and it's kind of given me more motivation to be able to, to learn to ski competently myself. And this week, has been amazing for that. I've really, really developed my skills. And once I got up on the top of the mountain, I was absolutely hooked. I just loved the feeling of it. And it's kind of like that feeling that I get when I'm riding, like it's that freedom. It's an awesome feeling. <laughs>